let me do that. And, and, and first, I just want to amplify the comments that were were made by Alan and, and uh, Matt, because I, I think in many ways there's been a lot been said and written and, and a lot of controversy around this facility and this effort. And uh, you know, there is at no time was there any sort of concern that this wouldn't turn into the I think the most important you know, dressage facility in the world. Is it going to happen this year, next year? Who knows? But I think within five years, this will be a, a standard within the sport and in one of the top facilities in the world. I believe that uh, like anything that is worthwhile in life, whether it's family or a business or a relationship or uh, anything, I mean, it's, it's difficult and challenging to make the transition from an idea or a concept into something that is meaningful. I mean, five years ago when Michael and I sat out here, and looked at what we were going to do at WEF, there were a lot of critics and there was a you know a lot of uh, people sort of saying, hey, it's not going to happen. This is the beginning of the end of uh, the Winter Equestrian Festival. And, and um, you know, we didn't want to really spend a lot of time addressing those issues. What we did is we spent a lot of time executing and we, we, we invested a tremendous amount of money, built relationships with very important people on the sponsorship front of which Alan was a participant and, and, and Matt was a participant and, and executed. And at the end of the day, um, talk is cheap. Uh, performance is is what and outcomes are what are, are generally what you are evaluated by and I think in many ways despite still lingering uh, criticism I, I believe the Winter Equestrian Festival is, is the one of the most important events in the world and it has really grown in a number of different areas um, in, in trying to work through the Global Dressage Festival there were also all kinds of challenges and all kinds of reasons why we shouldn't have done what we done did but people, you know, like Ken Braddock, who's been a champion of this, and Kim Van Camp and Boyer and, and some other members of, of our group, Robert Dover, I know was important to this. You know, there was an opportunity here to create something great. There was no expectation that it would be wildly successful in the first year, second year, third year. I mean, it was, it was sort of, hey, we're going to embark on a multi-year effort. It's going to be five to ten year commitment. We're committed to it. And um, I believe last year was, I think, very successful from our perspective much more so than we expected, and, and um, I, I think that trajectory will continue despite a lot of political issues that will come and go, and you know we will not be deterred um, by, I think, events that uh, have occurred. But I think when you evaluate what has happened here, there are a couple great moments um, that I, I will always remember because, again, I think I'm going to project forward to five years from now. You know, in, in the meeting that you referenced at the White Horse Tavern, you know, we sort of said, hey, we're looking to do this. We want to really look out to this crowd and look at sponsors and, and within three seconds there was a text from from Matt saying we're in for fifty thousand dollars and that was a meaningful moment again I won't forget it and it, it's it just shows some vision and commitment to the sport and a commitment to sort of the, the community and and it, it set a, a, a title flow of more more and more sponsors like Terry Kane and and um, you know the group that, that that sort of stepped up here to to make this important in the first year I think the, the the other great element here was with, with Alan and Adequan, and uh, I'll, I will not forget the fact that when the, uh, well, I won't, I'll be a little more political about it, but when all the controversy stirred up this past summer, it would be very easy for someone who was committing to a very significant amount of money in, in dressage to say, no, geez, I don't want to be a part of this. There's a lot of controversy around it. I'm concerned about the politics, and, and you know, I, I spoke with Alan and said, Alan, here's, here's the situation, and here's what's going on. And um, very easy for Alan to say, you know, I don't really want to be a part of this. He said, no, I'm all in. I'm there. I'm, I'm a partner here. We're going to see this thing through. And those, again, I think relationship elements that are very, very important to me as, as, a, as, a, as a businessman and, and to our organization. And uh, I have a tremendous amount of respect for, for both of these guys around the table. And I think this is going to settle over time. I think people are going to realize what we're doing is in the best interest of the sport. And, uh, you know, if people think they can hire politicians and do other things that are going to deter our interests here, they, they've picked the wrong crowd because we will do what we think is right and we will invest all resources to make sure that um, this is a, a very important um, uh, venue in this community and uh, it will elevate the, the sport. So from our perspective, um, you know, I'm excited about the future and hopefully um, we will see a trajectory that will increase over time. So. Thank you. Thank you again for all of your uh, support. Uh, I think if we could have Michael just talk about the schedule for this year. We had our first the national opener last week. We have our first CDI starting tomorrow, uh, CDIW. 
another CDIW, a CDI three star, a CDI five star, a CDIO three star. It's a pretty amazing circuit and compilation of international dressage. And, and what does it mean to have it here? Well, well now that you've told everybody everything that's happening, it's not much left for me to say. Um, Can you talk about the CDIO? And I will, yeah. The, I mean, one of the most exciting things is the CDIO, uh, where the FEI are going to let us test the um, the Pan Am system, uh, where you have two uh, Grand Prix horses and two Prix Saint George horses. Um, we're still finalising the details on that because the uh, originally the FEI wanted us not to have any uh, European teams; they wanted us to mix European teams in with South American teams, and so we have a number of European countries who. Um, uh, Australia and uh, several other countries who want to be part of it, so we're working with the FEI to get that resolved uh, pretty soon. Um, we got the extra uh, CDIW because I think one one fell out, so we're very pleased about that. And um, the five star, I think, sh should be really exciting. The schedule itself, we have the um, national shows as well that are, that are running more towards the end of circuit just to get, get people to bring out their young horses etc and I think it's going to be a really, uh, really exciting season. Um, and what about the Pan David Marcus, uh, you showed your Olympic course here uh, last year and can you talk a little bit about what it means to have this year in preparation for things like championships? I'd just like to say thank you for you guys on the panel who have, you know, been so dedicated to this because this this facility <clears throat> specifically has really allowed me and my horses to reach goals that I don't think that we could have reached without it because this uh, facility has allowed riders like myself to come show more often than we would be able to show otherwise because we can come to facilities, you know, that that have world class footing and world class stabling. So, and in a great location that's not really taxing for our horses. So the amount of competitions that we can do to be able to qualify for championships uh, is a lot more feasible because of this. Uh, my horse is in the stabling now. Uh, he'll be showing this weekend. Uh, so I'm, I'm definitely taking advantage of the opportunities here. And I think that this facility will continue to allow world-class riders from hopefully all over the world come here, which is ups, ups everyone's game. I, I think for me to compete against people that are better than me at all times has, has been what's made me successful and, and a facility like this really allows that and welcomes people and brings people from all over. So we look forward to that. So thank you. And Devin, if you could talk a little bit about um, the different levels that we have here, not only five CDIs, but the other types of divisions for up-and-coming riders um, and the opportunities it gives them and, and your plans for this year. Okay. Um, I think for sure this, I mean, thank you all so much for making this reality. I mean, when we saw it as a dream a, a year ago, a little bit more than a year ago, it seemed quite far away and now it's here and I think everybody's kind of proven that it's, it's staying. It's not going anywhere. Um, you know, last year we were able to really uh, bring in a lot more Brentina Cup riders and young riders and juniors who get to experience a facility like this. I mean, that doesn't happen for them very often. They're usually at smaller shows and things like that, and then they get to a national championship at a facility like this where they're warming up in the arena with international riders, and it's, it's terrifying. <laughs> so having the ability to have a facility here where that attracts the international riders like David and like David was talking about just a moment ago, you know, then you get the ability for the up and coming riders, the juniors, the young riders, they actually get to mix in and not only watch the riding, but actually be a part of it. And then it's, you know, it makes going to young riders not that intimidating. It makes our team going to World Cup and the European Championships in Aachen, you know, sending our riders over there, it makes it more feasible because the riders are used to that. They're comfortable in that sort of <coughs> surrounding and environment. So I think it's, it's incredibly important. And this year, for the first time at the national opener during the week, we brought some horses over and showed them during the week. And it was awesome. I mean, there was 
enough people here that it felt like a real show, but at the same time, it was a little bit more relaxed. So, you know, everybody kind of understood you were here schooling, helping the young horses, the ones that don't get out as often. So, I mean, it's a great opportunity all around. The showgrounds themselves, I mean, I brought my three-year-old over here last year, and he was a monster, but I felt safe. There's no, you know, they can't get away from you. There's walking trails that's separate from the people. So even if I'm walking to the arena and he freaks out, I'm not going to hurt anybody. We're safe. We're not going anywhere. You know, you kind of get channeled from one arena to the next, which is awesome when you have horses like that. And then the stalls and the stabling and everything. My horses have never slept so much. They've never laid down. They've never been as comfortable as they are. You know, I think we owe you a mat in one of the stalls, Mark, because my young horse ripped it out. You want to take it with them, I think. <laughs> but, um, but they love the mats. And they love, I mean, the water's good. The, it's open. It's airy. They're getting breezes. They're not sweating in their stalls. They're not standing in tents all the time, you know. I think just the thought that was put into every detail about this facility makes it what it is. It makes it international quality. And, I mean, we're thankful it's a real dressage facility. I mean, we have a real facility here just for dressage. It's amazing. Anybody have questions? Um, the controversy over this facility by your neighbors and uh, the, uh, the people in the village, uh, have they had an impact on, have they inhibited what's going on here in any way, just simply because I hear from a lot of people, they're hearing two sides of the story, not that there are two sides of the story, they're hearing those people saying there isn't going to be anything here because they want to close it down, and then they're hearing that there are shows. Um, so it, it is having an impact, but are you, do you know, are you feeling this? I'm sure um, the, the controversy, I think, was started with Alan and Adequan, so why don't you explain it? <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I plead the fifth. <laughs> well, in the absence of him answering the question, I will. Um, I, I'm sure it has had an impact. I'm sure there are people that didn't come because of the uncertainty associated with um, you know the injunction that that came out uh, uh, by the by Solar Sports and Jacobs. I mean, that's going to have an impact. Um, I, again, I think that it's it's something that will you know uh, bear the or the test of time will, will, will determine how much of an impact. But uh, I am confident that uh, we we have a, a, a valid process that was in place. I mean, the, the, I think the key to all of this was, and people don't understand the technicality of it, but there was a, um, on the original, um, on the original approvals, there was a lawsuit filed uh, by Charles and Kimberly Jacobs as well as Solar Sports that challenged, oh, the process was wrong, the permits weren't appropriate, all, a whole host of the accusations. And I think the strategy has been if you just say stuff enough, people believe it. And I think that was the, the, the statement that was, or that, that was what the Pratt strategy. So when this, the three judge panel came back and said, you know, certiari was, appealed without comment, which was essentially something called per curiam, it sort of shuts up a lot of people, and then you, you don't hear as much, but the, the fact is that a panel came back and said, yes, the process was right, yes, the compatibility was right, yes, whatever, you know, now obviously there are appeals and whatnot, but you know, at the end of the day, the approvals process was appropriate, they comment about there was no, never any permits, I mean, we did $8 million worth of construction here, there was one permit. That was the deck. That's the rider's deck over there. That was built in process. Uh, I, I believe that was the only one, Michael, that, that was done. So a three thousand dollar permit. Now, the the fact is, we did something. I mean, we did it in parallel to, um, you know, some approvals that uh, you know we took some risks around the the conditional use permit. But we have a use by right, I believe, on this facility. We'll we're probably going to pursue an injunction in the next couple of weeks. Um, we'll, probably, we'll probably file an injunction in the next uh, week or so to secure that. But at the end of the day, um, you know, any change in life gets a, a certain reaction. I think the people that are opposing this, while well-funded, are very small. And uh, I think in general, in the short term, it will have an impact. In the medium term, it will have less. In the long term, it will have um, very little, and it will, will, will forego it. But I just want to convey there is a huge level of commitment from 
our partnership, our company, and our individuals to make sure that this is an important venue in the world of equestrian sport and uh, specifically in the world of dressage. And in general, I think it's going to be um, you know, some time, but I think it's going to uh, we'll overcome these short-term challenges. I think the equestrian form, um, which I know had a dressage origin to it, that I know uh, Terry and, and Alec and uh, um, Kathy, I think, was involved, as, as well as um, uh, Jack. Um, you know, they, that group, I think, did a lot to um, raise the awareness that this just wasn't a, a battle between, you know, uh, WEF and, and, the, and the Jacobs, for the most part. I mean, I think hundreds of people, from my understanding, communicated to the village council and it, it opened up their eyes to some degree where they you know, came back and, and were supportive of uh, the, the, the uh, special use permit. I think in general, sending emails and communicating that this isn't sort of a private battle, but this is a, an industry that in many ways can produce hundreds of jobs, can be thriving from October, November through, through uh, May and April, or April and May, is, is important, and I think, again, if people can continue to use that vehicle or others to get the message out that this is important to them, um, I, I think it's going to help. So I, I appreciate the effort that was, was uh, put in place, and I think that will continue to have a role to the extent that uh, people are listening. I, I'm, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I'm not sure people are aware of. I think we're going to be a little more aggressive in the next couple of weeks to make sure people understand what happened here in some of the decision making, and I'm, I'm saying it because you know some of it was sort of public information, but there were some transactions that were that occurred days before votes that we don't believe were appropriate and uh, potentially had an influence. And I think when people understand exactly the dynamics of what happened, I think people are going to understand that this you know, there's a, there was a lot more politics here than practicality. And um, you know, this isn't. I, I don't think there's been a thoughtful review of what the benefits are to this community, what the benefits are to the equestrian uh, sport dressage. And um, I think this is, you know, the history will, will prove that this was a political protect my backyard initiative that uh, was well funded, that, uh, you know, disrupted the, the initial development of the facility, but, you know, we persevered and prevailed. Thank you all for coming. We really appreciate it, and uh, we hope to see you all at our shows. And thank you to our panel for joining us. Yeah, and we have lunch for you right over there. Um, so please enjoy. And, and we're charging ten dollars for the sandwiches so we can fix the roof. Um, <laughs> I just realized. <laughs> Is worse than I Yeah, okay, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs>